Um, exosomes is my next subject. Uh, exosomes are interesting. Uh, they're not tested, they're not proven. So that's the first thing to say. So if you see someone offering an exosome treatment, then they're offering it on the basis that it may or may not work uh, and it may or may not cause damage. Um, so that's something to be very wary about. But exosomes, secondly, have become very fashionable in the past five years, 10 years. And once again, they're nothing new. It was it was Peter Wolf back in 67, 1967, who first described um, exosomes. And he thought they were just probably waste products coming out of cells, which was a reasonable assumption back then. Um, subsequently, they've been shown to be important in cell to cell, -to -cell communication to some extent in, in uh, a treatment of disease. Um, they're very tiny. Um, 300 to 100 nanometers, a nanometer is a million, 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 no, yeah, 10 to the minus 9, a million, million, millionth of a, cent, a millimeter anyway, don't want to get bogged in, that, they're, they're small, um, and um, they contain various things, they contain nucleic acids, like micro RNAs, they contain lipids, which are fats, growth factors, chemokines, which can promote different things in cells, cytokines, which can promote cells to do all sorts of different and interesting things. So from a scientific point of view, they are extremely interesting and the potential is pretty big. Um, but we must not jump the gun. There are companies out there offering exosome treatments today. And in my opinion, this is wrong. Um, they should be taking it to clinical trial to do it properly, to show that these things are safe and effective. And if that's the case, then fantastic. Let's let's get them into the market. Let's get them into um, routine clinical use, and 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 get get going on this. But but we do need to be cautious. Um, that little picture down at the bottom there is a picture scanning electron microscope of um, uh, exosomes. Uh, so they're, 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 uh, they're relatively easy to obtain. They're, they're in, in, in most, uh, most cells will pr produce exosomes. Um, it needs quite a clever centrifugation technique to concentrate them. Uh, but we need to look at this and also the exosomes can be collected from all the different types of stem cells. So um, we need to understand the properties and the usefulness of all of the different exosomes from all the different stem cells. So the amount of work here is enormous. Um, my only negative thought on this is the fact that people are pretending that this is tried and tested technology, and it's not in any shape or form. But it does have immense potential. And once again, what I would like to see are things like combinations of uh, uh, exosomes with, with Goldic or exosomes with other stem cells. It's, it's, a, it's a, a, an interesting and uh, developing area. Um, as you know, one of my main interests uh, are adipose NSCs, and these these produce exosomes, and and they can be very good. Um, they've already been shown in, in experimental work, not in clinical work, but in experimental work, to be uh, neuroprotective. Um, so they're they're very good to protect uh, nerves from damage. Um, they can also help with um, myelin production. Um, this has potentials in things like multiple sclerosis where the myelin production is decreased or stopped. Uh, myelin is sort of the um, insulation of the nerve and if, it, if it's degraded, then you get diseases such as uh, uh, multiple sclerosis. Uh, a my, a myotroph sorry about this, a myotrophic lateral sclerosis, ALS, 
is a, uh, a quite a nasty neurodegenerative disease and uh, exosomes have been shown to have potential to actually protect nerves in that context. And in Alzheimer's disease, which is becoming more and more of a problem as we all get older and older, um, exosomes contain a, a compound called uh, uh, neprilysin, uh, which degrades one of the major uh, problems that occur one of the major molecules that occur in, in uh, Alzheimer's disease. They can also do all those other things. So you can see here that we have a system that is extremely interesting and it needs more work and the future could be very bright, um, but it'll only be bright if we do it properly. And by doing it properly, I mean that we take them to clinical trial we do not jump the gun and say, hi, guys, I've got a cure for Alzheimer's and it's called exosomes and it'll cost you £15,000 for your first dose and uh, form a queue. That's not the way to do it. And that's unfortunately the, the mindset of some people out there at the moment who are really uh, manipulating and abusing vulnerable patients by offering such treatments at this stage. We've got to keep an open mind. We've got to keep optimistic. We've got to keep determined. And that, that's fantastic. I'm, I'm all for all, all those things, but we've got to do it properly. We can't be messing around with these things. Patients' lives and welfare, welfare are at stake. And this is a serious subject. <laughs>